Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this rainy scene card with Copic markers using the new rainy friends stamp set from MFT stamp. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start by just stamping my images on a piece of express it blending card. That's the card stock that I like for Copic coloring. I'm using memento black ink because it is a Copic friendly ink, meaning that your um, ink won't smear when you go to color in the image later. And the thing that I really love about this stamp set is that all the stamps work together really well. So you don't need to worry about masking images off. If you look at that little puddle, it fits perfectly right between her feet and then the little raindrops fit perfectly over the little um, girl there. So we are gonna have a scene, it's a city scene and we're gonna have the Eiffel Tower in the background. So that's why I drew the horizon line um, right in the back there, just so we can split up the scene from the front of the scene where the little girl is standing to the back of the scene where we're gonna have the Eiffel Tower. And then to make it a little more interesting, I'm gonna put some little buildings and churches behind it um, as well, just to give it a real pretty rainy city scene look. So I'm gonna color in the foreground with some warm gray markers. Warm grays are great colors. Warm colors in general are good for the forefront of a scene when you want images to look as though they are closer because warm colors appear closer to us. Cool colors appear farther back. So I'm going to use some cool colors in the background and we'll use these warm colors in the, in the foreground and then we'll see how that um, makes the scene look overall. I am going to leave the center of the scene pretty light because I want it to look like there's a little bit of a shine maybe from all the rain or maybe some of the lights coming from the buildings and the Eiffel Tower there in the background. So just going to leave that center pretty light. Now I'm going to start using some cool colors in the background. So I'm going to use some BG90. This is a really pretty greenish gray tone. It's very, very light. And I'm just going to swipe my marker back and forth just to um, leave some little, I don't know, just a little color variation in the back of the scene there. And I'm going to um, really fill in the area right around the edges of the Eiffel Tower. That's going to help it look like there's a little bit of a mist kind of coming off of the Eiffel Tower. And then I'm going to add a little bit of that color into the puddle as well, just to make sure that the back of the scene and the front of the scene are um, tied together a little bit. So I have not done a video in a really long time. And the reason for that is I've been focusing more lately on being a student than a teacher. So I've been taking a lot of um, YouTube classes online, you know, just following along with other artists and learning new techniques. I've been doing a lot of watercoloring lately and not so much card making. So maybe I'm a little rusty here today. And now I'll explain to you what I'm doing. I'm just drawing some little buildings in the background. And one thing that I learned from watercolor is that for the backgrounds in your scene, you can just make random shapes. They don't even have to look like anything in particular. So I'm making these random rectangle shapes here just to look like some buildings and houses in the background. And then I'm going to put a little triangle on the top of that one. And now it looks like a little church. So, um, you know, I think the trick here is to just be as unselfconscious as you can and just add in all these little, like little shapes, like little rectangles, little squares, um, if you want to have a differentiated roof, you know, you could make like the little um, triangles like I did there or the little, I don't know what those shapes are, like the wonky rectangles like I have on one of the houses. And then I'm going to go back and make some buildings that are even further in the distance. And I'm going to use some um, warm gray for that in a three. And again, that's just to help tie the back of the scene to the front. So we have a little bit of warm colors there. Um, in the background also. And the buildings in the background, they're gonna get really thin and they're gonna be lighter. So they look like they are further back. So um, this is, I think, one of the tricks that I've learned from all the watercolor work I've been doing lately is that, you know, the less kind of self-conscious that you are about things and the, the more you just kind of let your pen go, um, the looser you are, the better your, you know, your work will be. Just have, have confidence in the what looks like a mess in the beginning because it can turn out to something really, really beautiful. Um, okay, so now we are gonna color in 
the little girl here. So we're going to give her a little purple jacket and a purple umbrella. And that's going to help that little white poodle that she's holding to stand out against the, the background here. So I'm just going to go in and fill in my base coat there. And I'm using some BV00. The colors I'm going to use for the umbrella and the coat are BV00, BV02, BV04, and then BV17 for the darkest shade. For her boots, we'll use some um, cool gray. So I want it to look like she has black boots and that the umbrella handle is black. So I'm going to start with a uh, a C5, which is kind of like a mid-tone gray, and then we'll add some darker gray to it um, afterwards, and that's going to make it look like a black handle, but it won't look flat because we'll have different um, shades of that, that gray black in there. For the umbrella, what I'm doing here is I'm putting the darkest color on the spokes of the umbrella, and then I'm just blending it out towards the center. That'll help make the little um, areas of the umbrella look like they're rounded um, and that they're kind of popping up from the little spokes there. And I'm going to even darken up the little area with the spokes with some BB-17 and run a little bit of it underneath the edges of the umbrella also. I'm going to add that same shadow color underneath the coat and then underneath the bottom layer of the coat there. That's that straight line going down the front of her coat that separates the top layer of the coat from the bottom layer. I guess one part of her coat is snapped over the other. And then I'm just going to blend everything inwards. And um, just blending here. One thing I noticed, so I haven't picked up my Copics in maybe a month or so maybe even a little bit longer. So I haven't made many cards in the past month and I think I've used my Copics. It's been even longer than that. Um, and they've some of them felt a little bit dry. So that's just one thing to um, keep in mind. I never noticed that with my Copics before. I guess if you don't use them, you start to lose them maybe. Um, so I'm gonna have to maybe give them a little bit more love so they don't um, dry up on me further. <laughs> Um, all right, for her hair, I just added a base there of E23. E23 is a really, really nice, bright, um, warm brown color that I just love. Um, and then we're going to add some darker brown tones over it in a second to make it look like she has some little wet, little wispy curls because of the, the rain that she's in. For the little um, poodle, I just put a little red bow um, in the poodle's hair and then used a little bit of cool gray to shade the sides of the ears. Now I'm going to color in those darker tendrils of hair with an E49, which is the darkest shade that I'm going to use here. And I'm just following the lines that are in the stamp to start. And then I'm going to add a mid-tone as well and just add some more little curls with that E57 and then a little bit more with E39. Honestly, I was just randomly grabbing um, brown markers as I was going here. So I think the principle to keep in mind is to have a light shade, a mid-tone, and a dark tone for your, for your contrast and your shadows. You don't necessarily need these colors, but I do like the way that they end up looking in the end. I think they gave a nice um, look to her hair. It's a real pretty um, wavy brown. Um, and it looks a little bit wet as well, I think, because of that dark E49, those little tendrils we put in there. Just going to add some more shading now with a C8 over the darkest areas of the purple, just wherever I thought it needed a little bit of pop. And then we'll work on the puddle a little. I didn't really pay much attention to this. I just um, followed along with the line. So applying the color. Um, just around where the lines in the stamp were, trying to leave some areas really, really light, um, like around her feet and in between the little lines there. So again, um, wasn't thinking much as I was doing that. And then I'm just going to add some BG72 to the back there just to give those buildings a little bit more interest. So I just kind of swipe it here and there, maybe, um, you know, to create like a roof on one, maybe some columns on another but just to add a little tiny bit of more interest to the back there. And then we'll color in the Eiffel Tower. So I'm using toner grays here. Um, cool grays would work, neutral gray would work. I just 
happened to pick up the toner gray. Toner gray is um, a color in the gray family that is closest, I would say, to warm, um, to the warm grays. So if I had to rank the Copics from warm to cool, I would start with warm, go to toner, and then neutral, and then cool on the other end of the spectrum there. And now I'm going to add in some more raindrops. So there is a raindrop stamp with the set, but I didn't um, pick an ink that was dark enough to pick it up. So I think I used Barely There by MF by um, Simon Says Stamp. And so you couldn't really see it. So I just went back over it with my B72. And then we'll add some B70 little raindrops as well. And I'm just focusing the raindrops around the little girl here just because she's the, she and the little doggy are the center of attention. I just wanted to leave the rest of the scene um, pretty undisturbed. So we'll add maybe some little tiny, very, very light raindrops with the BG70 um, elsewhere, but we'll focus the darkest raindrops right around the, the little girl. And then I'll also take the colorless blender and take away some color as well to make some um, some raindrops as well. So you could either add color or take away to make a raindrop effect. And I'm just gonna darken up the line there. That kind of separates the back of the scene from the front, add a little more color to the front of the scene, which is that very bottom of the card. And just some final highlights around the Eiffel Tower with that BG70. Just gonna add that to the center bottom as well. And now we can go ahead and stamp our sentiment. So the sentiment says you're my umbrella on rainy days. And I'm using some VersaFine black ink, which is a nice crisp black ink. And there it is. So there is our card project for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I really hope that you give this card a try. It's a lot of fun. And making city backgrounds like this is, is super fun too. So just um, have a great time with it. And I will see you again soon in another video.